Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, today's session. We'll uh, pray and begin. Uh, can somebody from the online batch pray, please? Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes, Nina. We can hear you. Okay. A gracious, loving Father, thank you for this day and time that you have given us, Lord, to come to your presence and to learn from your word. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have been speaking to us and teaching us, Lord, about our authority in you, Master. We pray that even as uh, today's lesson, we covered Pastor Nancy and each one of us, that our hearts would be open to receive what you're uh, teaching us, Lord, and that we would grow in the grace and knowledge of you and be able to use our authority in every sphere. For we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nina. Thank you for uh, leading us in prayer. Um, in the last class, we started this discussion about the strategies of a defeated enemy and we said that satan is already defeated uh, but he works strategically with uh, you know a couple of um, what what can i say uh, methods and uh, he tries to take down the believer first is mind games and we talked about how the mind is so important our thoughts our imaginations and if we can conquer this area of the mind and we can uh, consecrated to the Lord, then it is very difficult for Satan to affect us in our mind. So that we, we discussed thoroughly and we said we have to put on our armor. We should not allow any um, foothold or any opportunity for the devil to enter in. Okay. Then uh, today we will talk about open doors. I know that I introduced it uh, in the last class. I said open doors are another way in which Satan can influence. So how do open doors actually, um, how can doors be opened in a believer's life? So there are three main things. One is sin. If a believer continues in sin, now the Okay, let me enlist it and then I will explain. Sin, second one would be uh, wrong words which we use or it can be certain situations. So when we talk about sin, you know, even as believers, now that we are justified in Christ, we are righteous in, in Christ, that is the positional truth uh, of what Jesus has done. But can a believer sin? What do you think? Can a believer commit sin? Yeah. So a believer can commit sin either in thought or in word, in deed. Uh, but does the word of God provide an option for us to experience God's forgiveness if we make a mistake? Yes, that is also there. Because the Bible says we can repent, we can confess our sins, uh, and we can receive the forgiveness which God gives us. So when we talk about sin as an open door, it's referring to unrepentant sin. Okay, because conviction in the heart of a believer, that is normal. How the Holy Spirit works, uh, you know, he, he convicts us. And we read about that in John chapter 16. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. He convicts us. Now, when the Holy Spirit convicts us, we should respond. When we are sensitive, we respond. If we are not sensitive and if we don't respond again and again and again, if we engage in sin, that is when this open door is applicable. Okay, it's, it's somewhat like Samson, Samson situation, where he knows right and wrong. He knows the grace that God has given him, you know, through his, his Nazarite vow of uh, God had told him to grow the hair and his strength was in the hair. He knew everything, but he's playing around with the grace of God. He's playing around with his relationship uh, with God. And that's very dangerous. And we know what happened. Uh, he risked it and, you know, uh, he uh, experienced, like he went away from 
God's best for his life. And that is what we are talking about over here. So when a believer does that, we are not repenting. Even when the Holy Spirit is convicting us, we continue, continue, continue. Then that becomes an open door. Now Satan can use it and he can influence us. Uh, and what should we do then? No, we must overcome it. We must recognize that the blood of Jesus offers cleansing for us. Okay, so the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from our sin. It's already provided. As a believer, I should be humble enough to say, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I will change. Lord, wash me with your blood. Make me new. Okay, so when I do that, it's fine. I can shut the door on the devil. Otherwise, the door remains open. So there are two things which have been listed here in our notes. One is um, fleshly weakness, which is internal. Okay, when we talk about sin, fleshly weakness, which is internal. Then temptations, which are external. So for a believer, Satan tries to influence from outside. That we know. He will give uh, us some... Um, you know, uh, options to go after the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. So that work he does. But in our flesh, as James writes, you know, he says that God doesn't tempt us, but we are tempted because of our own desires. So we ourselves, when we don't overcome our flesh, when we don't walk in the spirit, these sinful um, influences can come from within us. So as a believer, we have to get rid of that. Okay? So both of this, our fleshly weakness, that's why the, the word used there is weakness. If we see any weakness in ourselves, it can be, uh, let's say, weakness for greed or, or a weakness of greed, weakness of pride, weakness of lust, weakness of jealousy, weakness of envy. Okay, so those are all fleshly, but we have to overcome that. And uh, of course, know how to go against the temptations that we have already discussed. So sin, this is how open doors through sin works. So what are the strategies to overcome? We must submit to the word of God. We must submit to um, what the spirit of God is convicting us and doing in our hearts okay, regarding that matter of sin. We can use the word. Remember, Jesus said, it is written, it is written. In Ephesians 6, we are told, use the word, uh, the sword of the spirit, the word of God. So to battle against, whether it is fleshly weakness or it is temptations from the enemy, we can use the word. We can use the power of the Holy Spirit and overcome it. So these doors can be shut and we must always remain on guard as believers. Always check and ask ourselves, hey, am I walking in love? Am I walking in submission before the Lord? Uh, is there anything? Is there a habit, a behavior, an attitude uh, which God has convicted me about and I have already dealt with it? These are questions that one can ask so that we keep the door shut on the devil. The second one is, of course, the words that we speak. Words carry authority. God created the heavens and the earth. How? By the words that he spoke. He said, let there be light. And there was light. So we recognize that our words carry authority, they carry power. And which is why in Proverbs 18 verse 21, uh, we read, death and life is in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So God is reminding us and telling us that the tongue, the ability to speak, uh, use words, he has given it to us uh, as a as a means to exercise our authority and use power as well. 
not just to communicate but we can use authority and uh, release power through our words so the words we speak can also um uh, open the doors for the devil to work in our lives how does that work remember when we first said that spiritual can influence the natural and in that we had listed we said some practices some dedication some sacrifices okay uh, or uh, uh, let there, there are commitments that people make through their words all that brings us in bondage to the enemy to satan and demons so our words in that sense can put us in bondage for example if you take somebody who has uh, dedicated themselves to a certain god or a goddess you already created that bond with your words with that demon okay now if things are happening in our lives because of that you know that bond or whatever you want to call it that contract or that promise that dedication god wants us to walk in abundant life but our word has put us in this bondage okay so we have to be careful so through our words we usually say things like renounce revoke use our words to proclaim the opposite so instead of uh, you know dedication to certain gods what we can say is i belong to jesus i'm washed by the blood of jesus i am a child of god i am redeemed so what am i doing i am proclaiming my freedom i'm proclaiming my position in christ is it powerful yeah because i'm telling satan i'm telling demons you have no authority over my life so our words are very powerful if we don't affirm that i am now a child of god i am no longer a slave of the the devil i am no longer i don't belong to the kingdom of darkness what will satan do he knows how to manipulate because we are not standing aligned to what god has done so our words are important dedications that one could have made or you know think about this uh with our words we say something like nothing good will happen in my life or um i am not blessed it happens isn't it sometimes uh, maybe if you are going through a low or uh, a difficult situation we make some statements and the, all this is very dangerous because what's it doing it's giving the devil ammunition it's giving the the enemy an opportunity so when, with my own words i say that i'm not blessed or nothing good will happen to me i won't get any good opportunities nobody likes me what's happening it's in contrast to god's word but i am using the power of words what did that was in proverbs say death and life so i can choose i can speak life or i can speak death isn't it so that's the danger when we speak such things upon ourselves or do you remember when we talked about prayer we said we have influence on family you know family members so uh, husband and wife they have influence in the spiritual over one another uh, parents over their children they have influence okay uh, or family members siblings we have influence spiritual influence over each other so when we speak life and we you know parents bless their children it happens when uh, let's say you know uh, husband and wife they bless each other things happen in a in a positive way because what are we doing we are using the capacity of authority and power in our words to declare it on our own family or any other authority figure right a pastor what do we usually do during benediction um the lord bless you keep you make his face shine we are pronouncing declaring blessing because that's what god told the priests to do for the people he said bless them they are my people they are a holy uh, people they 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 are um, like in in the book of peter we again read that you know now we are priests we are a holy nation we are a peculiar people so we pronounce blessings we use our tongue for blessing but if we do the opposite 
for example let's say a parent speaks over their child and says oh uh, this child will not do well in their lives or there's no hope for this child that's an open door because the authority is not being used by the parent to bless the child you understand so this is the way in which satan can use our words and so we have to be very careful about what we speak about ourselves what we speak uh, uh, into other people's lives use it in the right way because the bible teaches us that we can choose choose life speak life and the enemy will not be able to enter in but when there are words of unbelief words of cursing uh, words of fear all this is very helpful for the enemy to come in okay so our words our words are so important uh, for example you know i remember as a as a kid mm. uh, when when we become sick and we are small right uh, in some ways it's nice because you don't get to go to school you sit at home and everybody takes care of you everybody is worried about you so i remember as a little kid i thought hey this is so nice i want to be sick often okay and uh, i mean somewhere once i was born again and much older and all i realized i was falling sick very often as a kid okay but then i recognized maybe because it's a pact that i made and i told myself i want to be sick often but once i came to know that hey i shouldn't be saying such things about myself i renounced it i revoked it i said i cancel that in the name of jesus so now i'm healed by the stripes of jesus i no longer need to be sick often all the time so it's even simple things like that right that if the holy spirit reminds you of anything like that that we have spoken that immediately it's as simple as by faith you cancel it okay and you instead of that you speak a blessing upon yourself are you all following me okay great so this is how you know we must uh, take care of ourselves then the next thing is situations okay so the enemy will try to use some situations to enter and create trouble uh either for us as individuals or for us as uh, a church community okay uh for example remember in the last class we said only we know ourselves and so we must have standards and restrictions based on uh, our weaknesses now if i don't take that seriously okay now very simple example if i have a weakness for biryani okay and i know if i go if i see biryani if it's put in front of me i am going to eat like anything i will have to just tell myself okay don't go there just don't go there you know go somewhere else where you won't find what you like and you won't make that uh, you know gluttonous mistake again so situations the enemy can use it i'm just giving you a silly sort of an example but in other instances uh if we are not on guard right satan can use that situation it's unnecessary to interact maybe a certain person is causing us to to sin they are influencing us maybe it's a good thing not to uh interact with them right because scripture say that bad company corrupts good character uh, or go to a certain place which will make me sin so i should be careful to guard myself i have to guard myself right so as individuals that's how we do it then as a church community and a family again go by the instruction of god so there is one incident in the book of uh, corinthians so to the corinthian church um, you know paul gives them an instruction one brother he has fallen into sin so in the beginning to correct that brother it is a you know a, a sexual kind of a sin that he gets into and to correct that brother um he says okay put him away don't have anything to do with him don't interact with him like that so that he will come to the understanding that what i did is wrong okay so initially paul tells them that and then he says another thing uh, once the brother 
repents, he says, okay, now uh, don't treat him the same way. Now you can affirm your love to that brother, lest the devil you know, find an opportunity to uh, sort of create trouble for us. So what is he saying? He's saying, let's not have an environment of uh, bitterness, accusation, unforgiveness for that brother anymore. OK? That was not the original intention also. It was more in love so that the brother will repent. But now that he has changed, uh, he's telling the believers, there should be no opportunity for the devil. If we keep unforgiveness in our heart toward him or something like that, what will Satan do? He'll find that huh, this community is not walking in love. So he can do something okay, in our midst. So even as a community, he's encouraging them and saying, we should not have any open door for the enemy, like walk in love, uh, walk according to the word of God, uh, walk in submission to God. Right? So as individuals, Satan can use situations. Even as a community, Satan can use situations. So we must be careful to uh, manage those situations early enough. All right. So that's the way we look at it. So think strategically, always. Strat I don't know how to pronounce it. Strategically or strategically, whichever way, but that's the point. Uh, see, a good enemy will think how effectively he can attack, isn't it? So when we play those games, board games and all, we'll think, ah, OK, this is how I should go here. Chess, you think, here there's no protection. Let me go this way and attack, you know, checkmate. So Satan thinks strategically when he thinks about us. He sees everywhere this person is guarded, where is the unguarded part? Okay, And that's where we should not give him access. And so we can pray and ask the Lord and say, God, please help me to identify. How can I be strategic? How can I guard myself in a strategic way? OK? Um, so I mean, I don't want to get into examples. There are so many examples that we can think of where people are so good in ministry, so this and that. But somewhere in a small situation, they slipped, right? And it created so much trouble uh, for them, for everyone who's following them. So such things have also happened because they were not careful about the areas of weakness. But that's how Satan works. He's happy to see the smallest weakness. Smallest weakness, he can get in. And so that's what we are learning about. Don't give him any place. Shut the door on the devil. That's how we can stand strong and continue strong. OK, so the next way in which he tries to uh, affect the believer is violation and intrusion. This simply means that he knows what is legal in the spiritual realm. OK, so he knows that God's people now, they no longer come under his slavery. They no longer uh, are meant for, you know, if you, if you say oppression, they no, no longer are meant for, uh, you know, discouragement. So many things that we, we know. Jesus has come to set us free. He has come to give us an abundant life. We know that. But what will Satan do? Forcefully, he'll come. Okay, and uh, he will violate or he will intrude. Even though legally he has no right, he'll come and crash outside of his boundary to create trouble for us. So those are the times when, you know, we keep saying, rebuke the devil, rebuke the devil. Because what are we saying? We are saying, hey, you don't have any right. You have to leave. So in matters where, let's say, a believer, uh, we have uh, dealt with open doors. We have confessed our sins. OK? Everything is closed. Legally, everything is fine. And even then, if the enemy is putting oppression, what is he doing? He's trying to violate. He's trying to intrude. Intrude is barging in. Imagine you're sitting in your room. OK? Uh, and 
maybe you have even latched the room somebody breaks the door and comes inside that's what is intrusion he has no right but he still does it so when satan tries to do one is enter easily that is through the open door or enter forcefully that is violation intrusion if the believer doesn't stand up and say stop i rebuke you then he can continue to do whatever he wants to do all right so that's how it works so in a forceful way also sometimes the enemy can come and when we look at our family when we look at our circumstances situation sometimes we can recognize hey satan is doing this simply to trouble me he's trying to do all this you know we can recognize it and when we recognize it we should not tolerate it instead we should say no you don't have any right i want you to leave in the name of jesus you know that's where the whole rebuking the casting out and all that comes in uh, and so identify identify the enemy coming in you know in john 10 10 jesus said the thief does come uh, does not come except to do what steal kill and destroy that's his plan he wants to come in to steal kill and destroy so identify it and uh, ask the enemy to leave now that we have recognized that uh, we already have the victory through jesus through the cross we studied right so many things we studied we studied that the enemy is destroyed he is uh, expelled he is crushed he is condemned he is defeated we we've, we've already studied that we've also studied the dimensions of our authority we have been given the authority so what is the position that a believer should take the position that a believer should take is enforce the victory okay so it is now my right and my responsibility to enforce the victory i can enforce the victory on my own life or if i notice whether my church members or family members something they are going through and it's it's not right what the devil is doing what should i do i should enforce the victory i should command the enemy you leave in the name of jesus and then we will see the victory over there right so that is how uh, I, i want us to recognize you know what we are learning right now so each one of us we try to um, enforce the victory over different situations maybe uh, let's say sickness we've talked about it you know we we uh, go against it or if satan through some situations in our personal life if he's trying to trouble us again we can command and say hey devil you know take your hands off you have no authority over my family members or our finances right or uh, maybe uh, some issue of, of protection that you feel like he's trying to intimidate bring fear so we can say no we are already protected so in this manner we can battle for our loved ones and the extent of authority this we have already talked in james chapter 4 and verse 7 it says therefore submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you we talked about enforcing victory isn't it so that is resist the devil resist the devil but before resist the devil comes submit to god so our level of authority will depend on our level of submission that also we have recognized so the more we are submitted to god the greater authority that we can walk in so let us um, enforce christ's victory we can enforce it uh, in the area of you know marriage when people are married uh, you can you as a believer maybe your family members don't understand these truths right now but as you pray as you make declarations okay as you take charge even spiritual warfare 
taking authority, binding, losing. You can do all that. For your spouse, you can pray for the children. Maybe right now they don't understand, but you understand. Take that position to pray for them. Maybe somebody is you know, far away from God. So we can pray for them. We can pray for finances, work. We can pray for our future, ministry, and all that. And we can also minister to others. So when you come across a situation where people are affected, we can actually pray for them. So as I've been saying, oneness, we can take the authority and uh, enforce victory in people's lives. That is one method. But a better method is you teach them about who they are in Christ. Teach them about the promises of God's word. Uh, teach them what is the meaning of believer's authority, how to use the authority. Then what happens? They need not depend on us. They can continually practice right? having authority in Christ. So that's the manner in which we can enforce. OK, so I'll stop here. and. Um, I'm just looking at a question from uh, Jackin. She says, uh, Pastor, can this forceful entry of the devil happen in a believer's life amidst closed doors? I mean, when we are watchful not to give uh, in to our fleshly weakness and remain in word and prayer. So yes, uh, Jackin, that's what I'm saying. In amidst closed doors, Sometimes he barges in. Okay, so that, that's how the term said forceful entry. So he can try to create situations, uh, you know, that, that can directly or indirectly affect you. For example, like let's say, take the workplace. Okay, now you're walking with the Lord, you're walking in victory, you're walking righteously, but what if you know two or three colleagues they come up with a plot against you so what's happening there's something cooking like a weapon of the enemy he's trying to forge it against you it's happening right he's trying to intrude so how does he try to influence it's affecting my peace it's affecting my joy it's affecting my hope Right? What is going on in the office setting? So this is the way, uh, Jackin, he knows directly or indirectly. And generally, it's through closed circles that he may try to uh, intrude. Or mm, let's say in a moment of weakness, Okay, in a moment of weakness, uh, but then it won't be closed doors anymore because in those moments of weakness, just momentarily, we let our guard down, and he puts, uh, you know, the attack on us. So that's how it works. Uh, does it help? Do you have something more to ask along those lines? Okay, great. Yes. So Jacken is okay with that. Mm, any any other queries? I think it's the exam week, no? Questions are not coming today. <laughs> so, OK. Um, Pastor, regarding the, our words, mm -hmm. so um, if our words are like so powerful and and like life and death are in the power of the tongue, I mean, not everything that we say is that powerful, or not everything that we say comes to pass, right? So how do we say about that? Yeah, so not everything we say comes to pass. Well, what we say should be aligned to the truth. No, Rin. Um, so that is one thing. So if we say something, like for example, uh, okay, if if I if I say that I can I can be prosperous by ungodly means. That's not the truth, isn't it? The blessing, the real blessing comes from God and he does not add any sorrow to it. So the real blessing comes by walking in the path.
path of uh, righteousness. So when I say things which are untrue, as far as God's word is concerned, then it won't happen. OK? That is one way of looking at it. And there are many things, OK? Like, for example, even believing in uh, Mark 11, 23, that uh, famous uh, scripture where uh, Jesus he rebukes the fig tree and he says, uh, whatever you believe and, and you speak, right? if you ask the mountain to be uprooted and cast into the sea, it will happen. So sometimes we lack faith. We say it, but there's no faith. Then it doesn't happen. You understand? So the lack of faith also can make our words ineffective. So these are all some things. And uh, if it is a prophetic word, then it better be what God has spoken. I am saying something else. God is saying something else. Then it doesn't happen. So there are reasons why it doesn't happen. But if we are aligned to the truth of God's word, it's, it's got to happen. Like I'm referring like to the example that you said when you were ah. small. You said, um, I like being sick. And that's something that's contrary to what God would want. But that's not aligning. But then it's still happened that's true so you see the it's an open door basically what i did is i'm giving an open door to the devil because i'm speaking contrary to what god wants and satan usually likes these open doors these open situations that's how he got in and he was able to cause havoc you understood so while uh we were we were talking about the right things not happening. Sometimes the wrong things happen because Satan takes advantage of the wrong words. Is it making sense, or are you 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 seem like there's a question inside you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so our uh, words are not so. I mean, there's a limit to the power of our words, right? The limit is the, the, the boundary of our authority. For example, you may not be able to, um, um, for example, let's say, or, or let me put it this way. A, a parent speaks you know, words of blessing over their child or words of rebuke. Now, that is very powerful. But then if some third person, let's say, some random person, for no reason, nothing that the child has done, is bringing a curse on the child or something like that, it may not work because they are outside the boundary of influence. You got it? So the greater influence is the parents. They are in the boundary. So it's like that. Uh, so sometimes our words don't carry the authority because we are stepping out of our boundary. And if you try to make it work like that, it won't work. Yeah. So there's the limitation. That's the limitation. Just stay within the boundary. So uh, let's say I am the pastor of this church. Then I, ha I have responsibility for this church. So let me speak. Let me instruct. That will carry authority. If I try to go and create trouble for another pastor in his church, then I, I, if words are not happening, like it's not getting accomplished, I'm, I'm trespassing. You got it? So there are boundaries which we have to respect. Uh, and sometimes believers, no, we, we step on the boundaries and we expect things to happen. It won't happen. Yeah. Those are the limitations. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, does it apply to the enemy? We should respect boundaries. So you're asking, should we respect the enemy's boundaries? Uh, like, uh, what example, anything you have? Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So the enemy's boundaries. First of all, he doesn't respect our boundaries. <laughs> so I'm just thinking. Uh, well, see, I wouldn't put it as respect the boundaries of the, of the enemy, but it's more like don't take him lightly. Okay, because it's it's like if you have an angry, uh, uh, like an angry lion or something, you don't want to be playing a game, right? Because you don't know when it'll it'll charge at you. So it's somewhat like that. So I won't say I'm respecting the boundary of that lion. It's more like I'm protecting myself. Uh, but I don't take it lightly. Like I just stay within my zone, and uh, yeah, protect myself. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it should not be taken lightly. Another reason why I'm saying it is remember Jude, uh, verse nine, I think, where. Uh, where the angel says the lord rebuke you so there are uh, there are boundaries of authority we can't play outside of that like see the angels they have a boundary they cannot say or do anything outside their boundary like that as humans we cannot say or do anything outside our boundary everyone stay within your own uh, boundary which god has given then things work yeah okay all right uh so no further questions i suppose okay nina has something to yes nina uh this is regarding like uh, we are, i mean a friend of mine who has mm -hmm. a special child Okay, there has been kind of prayer in a in a way like in a on and off when we have our prayer times and all that for him. Uh, but more recently, some situations have come up, and when you know the my friend's husband said that okay, we need to put he's quite he's still six and a half, want to put him in a school or you know that kind of a thing because it might may be that he'll be difficult to handle and all as he grows up. So then we thought that we would really. Uh, spend some targeted times just for uh, his name is Sam, the the boy. Uh, so we've been doing that uh, for maybe about two weeks or so. Yeah. So is there anything else? And so while in the midst of, I mean, praying specifically in the spirit and praying using our authority and all, there has been some small improvements here and there. But is there anything else that we need to do? And in the meanwhile, somehow. Well, I feel that probably it's because of our uh, consistent prayer that uh, they have been led to go to certain people who are specially uh, specific in this area, like in the deliverance ministry, like that. So probably they would uh, be going, uh, taking Sam there also, hoping. And at the same time, there's some functional medicine treatment also is going on, which is quite specific like you know it deals with so many things so is there anything else that needs to be i mean that needs to be kept in mind mm -hmm. while we uh, do this yes like i mean so, do it's persistent i mean we just continue and uh, like mm -hmm. how is there anything else that we need to do yeah yes yes uh, nina thank you for that question um so what we could do is See, we always stand on the promise of God and we always contend. Uh, and uh, Jude, he says, contend for the faith. So what is our faith? Our faith is that Jesus has done it all and that our body, our soul, our spirit, everything is redeemed. Okay. So having that in mind, uh, what we would say is you continue to pray for uh, wholeness in his body, wholeness in his mind, because we can we can speak uh, declarations over him where you know we have scriptures that say um, that uh, uh, I have not received a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. We can uh, speak that you know my my mind. Um, I have the mind of Christ. We can continue to speak declarations in line with God's word. So what is our expectation that the child will be made well completely? So we are expecting a 100% uh, change. 
for the child and we should never stop praying for that because we serve a god of miracles we serve a god of the supernatural so these things happen and even as we trust god for revivals right these breakthroughs happen so our faith should be in that place uh, then whatever you said you know you are praying for the child you are uh, speaking protection over the child so that is the spiritual uh, way in which you are addressing that enough uh, and two things to do spiritual natural and in the natural everything that you know to do which is therapy um, approach a special child in a in a different manner so we'll keep doing the natural and the praying while we contend for his wholeness so that's how we would approach it uh, neena and i do get the the struggle that many of us especially in the area of healing we trust god and then you know we are we are waiting and waiting for the 100% uh, improvements but while we are waiting another thing that we can do is see what is the current circumstance there is a sick child a sick parent a sick um, you know family member who has been entrusted to us as a believer take good care of them right yeah we are trusting god for healing it will manifest in this way all that but right now they need care they need love they need uh, you know us to serve them so i think that is something we can continue to do uh, offer our love or offer our care uh, work hard you know to to keep them comfortable and safe so uh, that is the approach i hope uh, that answers your question or how how is it okay sure sure so anina is fine with that um all right uh, so jackin has another comment uh, for example when there is confusion at home uh, it is our choice to speak peace according to god's word or we can also give in to our fleshly weakness and in fear we speak discouraging words against faith uh, so that that allows the devil to operate i mean gives him an open door to operate and take control in fact uh, makes the situation yeah that's that's perfect uh, jack and in fact he'll be waiting for those times when people are fighting because people don't think too much right to uh, say the right words when they are angry or they are upset so yes we must truly watch out for those open doors which we create for the devil all right so uh, i think with that let's uh, close for today oh you have a question no no you can take it just one minute yeah um, so pastor here uh, talking about sin yeah. unconfessed sin and uh, unrepented uh, sin so yeah. as a believer like uh, the, the sin maybe happens every other day so what happens when we something happen to us like death uh, without this unconfessed sins because i learn like just we are justified but sanctification is an ongoing process so how it um, happens like yes yeah so see if there's a uh it is a like a one off sin meaning i i did something and uh, i got convicted by the holy spirit but i did not have a chance to confess it maybe that person passed away some accident something uh you rightly put it we are already in christ right we have been justified we have we have received from what jesus has done so that's that's all right you don't have to worry about it so jesus has already paid for our sins but in the case of repeated when we say unrepentant it is most likely repeated sinning in that area so that is what we are talking about so that person knows but they are not dealing with it and they are that is god will hold them accountable for that yeah sure. okay so yes rin let's let's deal with it otherwise uh, yeah uh, same thing regarding the words so uh, you said um like if it's within your family and let's say your kid ha is yeah. sick and all that and uh, it has more power because you have more influence over them so i um, mean the thing is um so let's say i mean your own child is sick and then you're praying for healing and you declare that the person is healed and uh, but the thing is your 
child does not get any better, it gets worse. But then when a man of God, whom like you don't know, maybe you go for a conference with your child and uh, the man of God prays and the person, your child gets healed. I mean, but then he does not have any influence mm. with the child. So how mm. do you say that? Okay. So see, I'm not saying that um, others don't have any influence. I'm saying the people who are in that close circle have the greatest influence. Okay, now when you talk about a minister of God, they have influence in the body of Christ, isn't it? So, see, when I, I am a teacher of God's word, I teach in my church, but if somebody else calls me and they ask me to teach, it will still have influence. And I pray for those people. Some influence is there, but I'm saying the primary influence lies with the pastor of the church. You understood? So, similarly, for this parent. Uh, situation the primary influence lies with the parents now if they go for prayer to a minister of god it will work because they may be carrying a certain authority because of the grace that god has given uh, given them as a pastor or a prophet or you know some something else so it will work the influence of the parents worked to whatever extent and the influence of that minister is also working so good for the child right it, it's not that it won't work. And I was just trying to point out primary influence lies with the authority figure in that structure. So that could be a parent uh, or, uh, you know, the father of, of the family, the husband, uh, the pastor, the leader, or the employer, the boss, or the prime minister. So th there is a particular authority figure that God has placed over each setting and a primary influence lies with them. That's how it is uh, in scripture. Okay. Right. All right. So we'll pray and we'll uh, uh, close then. Uh, can I uh, again ask our online batch to lead in prayer, please? Nice to hear your voices once in a while. Nice to hear your voices as well. I'm just saying, because we don't hear theirs. Uh, Shall I pray, Pastor? Yes, Jacket, please. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for helping us to understand from your word, Lord. What is the authority that we have as your children, Father God? Father God, help us to always remain in faith in you, Lord. And also, Lord, when we give in to those momentary weakness, Lord God, look up to your face, Lord, for help and refuge, Father God. Turn to your word immediately, Lord, in that moment, Lord, so that, Father God, we will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, Lord, that it, it, it will not have any control over us as your children. Children. Father, we commit each of us, Lord, to obey your word and stand by it so that we can live victoriously, Lord, day after day, Lord, every day in your presence, Father God, so that we can overcome all the tactics of the devil and live a fruitful life, Lord God, wherever that you have called us to live, Father God, for your glory. In Jesus' mighty matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, everyone. God bless you and uh, have a blessed weekend. All the best with your assignments. Um, do well in them. Thank you. Bye for now.